Miss Good Morning. It's Miss Bonnie here. Um, today, I have a couple of stories for you. And I invited a couple of my animals here to hear the stories because these stories about are about animals. They're about two different animals. So in my first story that I'm going to read, it's about an animal that is really, really tall and it has spots and it has a very long neck. Can you guess what it is? It's a giraffe. This is the only toy giraffe I have. This is Sophia's teething toy. Um, so the first story is about a giraffe. And we'll see what the second story is about after the first story. Maybe you guys have this book at home. This is one of my favorites because I love animals and I love to dance. Do you like to dance? I love dancing. Sometimes people don't really like to dance because they feel embarrassed. But once you find a good song that you really, really love and you don't care, it's a lot of fun. Giraffes Can't Dance. This is written by Giles Andrea and Guy Parker Reese. Do you see the giraffe right there on the front? Do you guys have this book? Gerald was a tall giraffe whose neck was long and slim, but his knees were, off, were awfully crooked and his legs were rather thin. He was very good at standing still and munching shoots of trees, but when he tried to run around, he buckled at his knees. Oh no, he falls down. Now, Every year in Africa, they hold the jungle dance where every single animal turns up to skip and prance. Jungle dance. Do you see all the animals dancing around? There's zebras, and crocodiles, and lions, and hippos, and elephants. Oof, there's a lot of animals. Lizards down here, snakes. And this year, when the day arrived, poor Gerald felt so sad because when it came to dancing, he was really very bad. The warthogs started waltzing and the rhinos rocked and rolled. Do you see the rhinos? The lions danced a tango that was elegant and bold. The chimps all did a cha-cha with a very Latin feel and eight baboons then teamed up for a splendid Scottish reel. Gerald swallowed bravely as he walked toward the floor. But when the lions saw him coming, they soon began to roar. Hey, look at that at clumsy Gerald, the animals all sneered. Giraffes can't dance, you silly fool. Oh, Gerald, you're so weird. How do you think that made Gerald feel? Gerald simply froze. He was rooted to the spot. They're right, he thought. I'm useless. Oh, I feel like such a clot. Look at his face. So he crept off from the dance floor and he started walking home. He'd never felt so sad before, so sad and so alone. Where he's going all by himself. Then he found a little clearing and he looked up at the sky. The moon can be so beautiful, he whispered with a sigh. Excuse me, coughed a cricket who'd seen Gerald early on. But sometimes when you're different, you just need a different song. Listen to the swaying grass and listen to the trees. To me, the sweetest music is those branches in the breeze. So imagine the lovely moon is playing just for you. Everything makes music if you really want it to. So Gerald closed his eyes, you see. With that, the cricket smiled and picked up his violin. Then Gerald felt his body do the most amazing thing. His hoofs started 
had started shuffling, making circles on the ground. His neck was gently swaying and his tail was swishing round. He threw his legs out sideways and he swung them everywhere. Then he did a backward somersault and leaped up in the air. Gerald felt so wonderful, his mouth was open wide. I'm dancing, yes, I'm dancing, I'm dancing, Gerald cried. He was so excited. Then, one by one, each animal who'd been there at the dance arrived while Gerald boogied, uh, boogied on and watched him quite entranced. They shouted, it's a miracle. We must be in a dream. Gerald's the best dancer that we've ever, ever seen. How did you learn to dance like that? Please, Gerald, tell us how. But Gerald simply twirled around and finished with a bow. See, everybody's throwing flowers at him. Then he raised his head and looked up at the moon and stars above. We all can dance, he said, when we find music that we love. The end. Wasn't that so nice? I love this book. Beautiful book. Can you dance like Gerald? I don't know if I can dance like Gerald, but I can dance like Miss Bonnie. So our next book is about my favorite animal. Do you guys remember what it is? He is sitting right next to me. It's a very, very big animal with big ears and a long truck. Yes. An elephant. But it's not Horton. You guys know I love Horton, right? But this one is about this elephant right here. Well, it's not really about the elephant, but the elephant comes in the pictures. And this is one of my favorite books. I read it all the time for bedtime. This is called You Are Here, You're Here for a Reason. And it's written by Nancy Tillman. Do you see this great big elephant? You're here for a reason. You certainly are. The world would be different without you by far. If not for your hands and your eyes and your feet, the world like a puzzle would be incomplete. Even the smallest of things that you do blossom and multiply far beyond you. A kindness, for instance, may triple for days or set things in motion in different ways. It travels much further than you'll ever know under the treetops, over the snow. Till it's wandered and fluttered and floated and twirled, making things happen all over the world. You're here for a reason. It's totally true. You're part of a world that is counting on you. So don't be too worried if some days fall flat. Good things can happen even from that. Life can be tricky, there isn't a doubt. You'll skin your knees trying to figure it out. But life works together, the good and the bad, the silly and awful and happy and sad. To paint a big picture you can't always see, a picture that needs you most definitely. Remember that next time a day goes all wrong, to somebody else, you will always be strong. And that ball that you lose or that kite you let go could make someone stay. You just never know. You're here for a reason. If you think you're not, I would just say that perhaps you forgot. A piece of the world that is precious and dear would surely be missing if you weren't here. If not for your smile, and your laugh and your heart. This place we call home would be minus a part. Thank goodness you're here. Thank goodness times two. I just can't imagine a world without you. 
the end. Wasn't that so nice? And I wanted to show you guys something too. Because this talks about that sometimes days are good and sometimes days are bad. But you can always be happy. And sometimes when bad things happen, mm, you can be okay with it and trust that that's the way things are right now, but they can get better. So look, this little boy, do you see what he has in his hand? A kite. And I think he's helping this little elephant. Do you think he's helping the elephant? He might be. Look, he's helping the elephant cross the street maybe. And then, do you see the kite? Is he still holding it? He let go of it. And now, they might be helping these ducks. I don't know. But they're playing with the ducks and they're enjoying the time with the elephant and with the duck. And look, there goes the kite. And this kite, look, it comes out in the whole book. It flies around. And look at these, these guys right here, the fox. The mom fox uses the kite for something else, right? The boy lost it, but now it's being useful for pulling these little baby foxes. And then this little girl grabbed one of the ribbons of the, of the kite. And look, this bird is also using another ribbon of the kite. See, the kite's being used all, even to have fun and twirl. And then the boy is playing with this ball. Did he catch it? Mm-mm. He lost it, but now he's helping a giraffe. You see? But the ball comes up here. And other people are playing with the ball. See, the ball is being used for something else. And now at the end, everybody's playing together with the kite and with the ball. So you are part of this world. And you are very important. You're part of my world and you are very, very, very important because I miss you so much. I hope you liked my two books. I will come back and read to you another time. See you next time.